that the world could be destroyed and would be destroyed and isn't as important as we think if it becomes so fracked up that no one even believes in the Lord anymore? And so Noah was ordered to what? Take the remaining believers and two of every species. And the world was destroyed. And what is the deep part of the story? Since we're talking about family and that connection and remembering your line. Just as the calamity had been between Cain and Abel and Adam seeing his own son kill his own son. Noah, our prophet, wanted to save his son. He said to his son, please listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. The truth is what we're trying to tell you. I'm telling you the truth, not just some crap I made up, not some babbling from some interdimensional being, not some false nonsense crap that you've heard, but the truth from the Lord Most High. Believe in him. Oh, Father, you're wrong. Nothing's going to come. I don't believe in that Lord that you claim to know. I will go to the highest mountains. And even Noah couldn't, couldn't sometimes get his own son and his own blood to hold on to the chain. The hardest of things that Adam learned with his son and Noah learned with his son. But the importance in the symbol and in the sign of the truth is that the world was flooded and destroyed. When exactly? God only knows. But the narrations from numerous cultures and civilizations and numerous languages all depict the same thing. And in that are signs for those who understand. As Allah orders us in the Quran, look through all the different lands and see what their stories were of what really happened. It's there, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is out there. <laughs> if we're gonna get a little bit trippy, we might as well go all the way. The truth is out there. The truth, as a fundamental, must always be there, and it's a guarantee from your Lord as the Articles of Faith. Continuous prophets with continuous revealed books. For the truth, be there always for those who seek it and are ready to actually understand the truth and the light. This is something that only Allah brings. Seekum wa nafsi bi Allah. I ask Allah to protect us and, and give us faith because people have faith and then they lose it. So I'm not claiming to be better than anyone. Faith increases and decreases. It's one of those things. But guidance to the truth, when somebody sees it, when God blesses them in his plan, then they see the light, then they see the truth. But I'm hoping if you're paying attention to the story, you just might see two or three different things and the story might start to click and perhaps the truth might just set you free. Are you free? You are a man son of Adam, created and born free on a planet given to you by the Lord to rule over it as the greatest of race and greater than any of the other races, slave to no one, servant to no one, bowing down to no one, humbling yourself under no one, worshiping no one other than the true Lord. La ilaha illa huwa. There is only one God, the true Lord. But somehow it was lost. And so Noah went on that journey. And time continued. And again, over time, strange things happened. Somehow, people, although the prophets were sent and the books were given, the other races didn't give up. And Satan, as he promised, would do whatever he could. And God warned us that he was going to be a serious enemy. This isn't a BS war. This isn't a figment of your imagination. This is a war, a battle over your soul, your divine life. Do you understand the ramifications? 
He's not pussyfooting around. This is strategy, and you're dealing with an alien race that has intelligence and free will and the ability to manipulate and maneuver and deceive and strategize using strategery to deceive you? It has always been. Do you not understand? <laughs> and so the story continues to our father, Abraham. Now the story of Abraham is very important because Abraham was so significant that he continues to remain a pillar of monotheism. A pillar that all the major monotheistic religions to this day, Islamic included, consider Abraham the pillar of the faith, our father in lineage. If you remember the story of Abraham and wake up, if we go back to the war and understand what we're talking about in the cosmic, intergalactic, universal war between us and the other races, you'll remember that Abraham wakes up where? Babylon? Sumeria? The places where people had begun and learned to use the technology of the alien races and were able to perform feats and magic and strange things that we know to this day were really, really fracked up. I mean, you know, there was some weird, wild stuff going on back then, right? We know this stuff. And how does the story go? The story goes exactly like it's supposed to. If the truth shall set you free, then here it is. Abraham wakes up where? In a society that is great and grand. Full of idols and pagan worship. Why? Somehow, again, over time, the interdimensional beings, the other alien races, the jinns have manipulated mankind, and there we are figuring out how to use their technology and following their systems and believing in them as our gods, and we have statues filling all the places of worship. <sighs> There is no power, or glory, or might, or strength, or true power, except the Lord Most High. Do not be deceived by any of the other manipulation, misinformation, or even supernatural technology that could have come from the other alien races. The power of God is always more greater than that. Were the alien races, although we don't know where they were or what exactly they came to, we know that they weren't all exterminated. But from the tradition, we know that Satan or Lucifer, before he, he ascended to the highest heavens, took them and threw them on some island, or perhaps another planet, or perhaps somewhere far in the galaxies. At the end of the Great War, before the creation of Adam. But by the time Ibrahim, or Abraham, arrives on the scene, they're worshipping all the different gods, getting their knowledge from the other side, the other dimension, again. But Abraham's story is there very clearly for you to understand the importance of the truth. Abraham knows that this cannot be right. I cannot be worshipping these false gods. He wants to know the truth of the Lord. And so we know as the story goes, as the ways of the other side and their knowledge of the stars and the galaxy, because of their ability and technology to move about the universe, they sometimes share technology with this world and sometimes people in this world get misguided. And Abraham asked the same questions that you should be asking today. Do I worship the stars? No. The stars extinguish. Do I worship the moon, Ibrahim said. No. We're not lunar worshippers. We don't believe in the, the moons. That's not our God. Do I worship the great and powerful sun? 
No. That's not our God. 